Ladies and gentlemen, there's a close race for the Senate in Wisconsin. For many people, it's a sleeper race, but not for Eric Hovde, who is running a hell of a campaign in Wisconsin for the United States Senate. I wanted to introduce you to him nationwide. Eric Hovde, how are you, sir? I'm doing great, Mike, and it's on, it's an honor. It's to Mark, be on but that's show. okay. Mark, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's all right. Everybody <laughs> confuses me with Mike, and I don't believe it's bigotry. You know, when you say it's Kamala, not Kamala. No, oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. Anyway, Eric, tell the nation about your race in Wisconsin, please. Race is going super well. Uh, look, Wisconsin's the battleground state. I'm running against one of the most extreme liberals uh, you have in the U.S. Senate, Senator Tammy Baldwin. Uh, we're in a neck and neck race. Uh, we've had seven different polls, all having it within one to two points. Uh, I'm focused on the issue of saving this country, the economy, inflation. Senator Baldwin has voted for every extreme thing, opening our southern borders, giving illegals cash. Uh, she's a big one pushing to require boys to play in girls sports, guys to go into girls bathrooms and locker rooms. Uh, She has just been a rubber stamp for the progressive left, uh, votes with Joe Biden 95.5 percent of the time. And as I said, she's often voted number one, two or three, the most liberal senators in the Senate. So the the race is going fantastic, Mark. And they always pretend these leftists that they're not leftists. They go to Washington and they they jerk hard left, hard, hard left, and they go home, and then they pretend, oh, gee, Willikers, you know, they're kind of moderate. They don't support all these perverse and odd things. And now I understand they are spending a fortune, like they are in all these states, they're spending a fortune in Wisconsin to lie about her and to lie about you, correct? Look, they've spent more money attacking me. They, I was the first uh, U.S. Senate candidate Republican to be attacked. And they spent more money per capita on me than any other uh, Senate race. Uh, And the interesting thing, the momentum is all on our side. Uh, There was a period in the summer where they were just blasting me. Every ad is a lie. They tried to tell people, I'm a fourth generation Wisconsinite, live in Wisconsin, have a company, all the rest. They tried to call me a Californian because I bought a business in California. Uh, they've lied about my position on literally everything. Now they're tra- trying to scare seniors and saying, I'm going to take away their Social Security. I mean, they, they actually ran an ad saying that I said that farmers are lazy because uh, 14 years ago I talked about how uh, farmers that used to have to toil in their fields to plow their fields manually because of advancements, they now plow their fields with tractors. True statement. Nothing right. about being lazy. They're the hardest working people. But this is the depth that they will go to. So they've class, uh, have named me the jerk from California or the California jerk. Uh, and they have nothing to run on, Mark. I mean, she, what, what is she going to talk about? Her record? Uh, she's done nothing on, uh, uh, with inflation other than vote for all the spending packages, the Green New Deal's to ignite inflation. She's voted multiple different times to open the border and then said, we spent too much money on border security. Mm -hmm. She she actually ran an ad saying she did something on fentanyl. It's an issue I've been talking about because we've lost 108,000 Americans last year, 112,000 the year before, number one leading killer of 18 to 45-year-olds in our country that poisons produced in China sent to the drug cartels brought up over our southern border. Washington has done nothing. I've been hammering her on it. So then she runs an ad saying she's done something. What did she do? She was the 40th senator to sign on to Republican Senator Tim Scott's bill. And fortunately, Tim Scott came out and said she never had any involvement with the bill, never offered amendment, and never even spoke with her for two years. So, mm-hmm. you know, we're, we're, we're hammering her on all her lies because her literally whole campaign is bad about lies. It's so bad, she literally said, working with President Trump and got a bill done on uh, requiring U.S. Steel, 
And yet this is a senator who said President Trump uh, is one of the most dangerous men with a dark soul. And the bill that she's claiming never was a bill. It was an executive order by President Trump. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, I mean, Mark, these people have no bottom. They have no moral compass. All. They will say and do anything to hold on. And yet, Eric, Eric, Eric Hovde, you're hanging in there. It's a close race. Um, you're able to get your message out there. You're a self-made man, correct? I'm a classic entrepreneur. I started my first company in my 20s, built multiple different companies, bought and turned around dozens of banks around the country. I have a real estate development company. I have a foundation that uh, rescues children not only in this country but all over the world through our Hovde homes from sex trafficking, abandonment, slavery in the case of Africa. Uh, and we fund a lot of food banks and drug addiction centers and help single moms. So uh, I, I'm blessed. I have a wife and two daughters and three grandchildren. And I got into this race for one simple reason. I love my country. And, and we both know we're losing our country right now. And, you know, we all have to do our part. I couldn't sit on the sideline anymore. I, I, I believe I have, uh, you know, faith and to who much has been blessed, much is expected and to where a man's heart goes, so goes his treasure. So I love this country, America, our home, and we just got to fight for it. If people want to help you, where do they go? They go to Eric, E-R-I-C, Hovde, H-O-V-D-E, dot com. Mm -hmm. Now, Tammy Baldwin has been in the Senate, what, two terms? Uh, she's been in the Senate for two terms in Congress for uh, 14 years before that, and then she was in the State Assembly and on the County Board. Literally, she graduated college and has been in politics her entire life. I noticed this with most of these Democrats, Biden, Harris, uh, your opponent, all these other opponents. I mean, uh, in Ohio, the Senate race, the Democrats been in politics for half a century. These are people who have no world, world, uh, real world experience. These are people that never hired anybody. They've never worked behind a cashier. They've never gotten dirt under their fingernails. And yet they feel they can run the country. And what they're very good at is raising enormous sums of money, pushing out propaganda, they're very good at demagoguery, that is, running against fictionalized candidates and so forth. They have all this down to a science. So it is very difficult when somebody like you comes along, who's a private citizen, who's worked in the private sector, who wants to bring some of his expertise to Washington, D.C., and you run into this really sleazy buzzsaw, no? A hundred percent. And you know this, Mark. They have a machine. Uh, they're candidates, they're puppets. I mean, look at Kamala Harris. Uh, it, it, I, I don't mean to be derogatory, but she doesn't have the intelligence to even string sentences together. No. Uh, Joe Biden had dementia. Tammy mm -hmm. Baldwin has no knowledge at all. Look, what did our founding fathers want? They wanted citizen legislators, people that brought their skill sets to Washington to serve a term or two and leave. Look, I, I have a, a development company. I understand what the issues with uh, housing and how to build more affordable housing. Senator Baldwin uh, has never had to buy herself health insurance. I've had to buy thousands of employees health insurance and navigate with the mess that Obamacare has created out of our health care system. I understand how our financial system works uh, and, and how our economy works and understand the seriousness of the debt trap that the Democrats have placed us into. And by the way, a number of Republicans where they're mm -hmm. freewheeling spending. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I have real life, real world experiences to bring to Washington to fix these problems. But if, if you've been in politics your whole life, how would you even come close to knowing how to fix any of these problems? Because you've never served in any of these industries to know how to address the, the underlying issue. So you are 100 percent cor correct. Democrats as a whole, they're puppets. Uh, they're bought off. Uh, Senator Baldwin has always ran against Wall Street, and yet she lives with a Wall Street executive, her partner, Maria Brisbane, uh, and, and, and takes money hand over fist from uh, uh, Wall Street. 
That's the other thing that's very interesting to me. They raise far more money than any Republican candidate in any state. They're raising far more money than Donald Trump. And they say, we're going to tax the billionaires. They only tax certain billionaires, don't they? That is, they tax industries that they don't like, that don't support them, and they give a pass. Worse, they use our tax dollars to subsidize industries that support their billionaires. So their billionaires, their oligarchs, become exceedingly wealthy, wealthier than they are, as they punish their political opponents, they punish businesses that don't fall in line, and so forth and so on. Isn't that about right? You're 100% right. And, and they keep driving us into socialism, but it, it's, a, it's a corporate socialism, uh, where you have certain big corporations and industries where they're getting super rich, uh, and and they're compressing all the middle class and lower income folks. Look, you know, they love talking about wealth inequality. And yet, isn't it interesting under President Obama, wealth inequality grew at the fastest rate. It then went down under President Trump and then exploded higher under President Biden. I mean, look, in the world of business, results matter. You know, if you don't make money, and your business is in trouble. In politics, uh, you, you know, nobody's judged by results. Look under President Trump. Real wages rose by 7.7%. Under Joe Biden, over the last almost four years now, they've declined by 2.1%. Mm-hmm. Half of Americans feel like they've been in a recession. Why? Because they have been in a recession. Mm-hmm. When your wages have declined... And by the way, all this, a lot of this job growth the last couple of years, most of it's illegal immigrants or second mm-hmm. and part time jobs. So if you really get under the hood, they've made a mess out of everything. And what they've done is they bankrupted our country. You know, great societies fail. How do they fail? Rome, the Dutch Empire, the Spanish empires, the British Empire, the different Chinese empires. It's always the same. They lose their moral compass, and then they bankrupt themselves. Eric, if people want to help you, they need to go to erichovde.com. That's H-O-V-D-E.com, erichovde.com. We're putting it up on all my social sites. You're a fantastic candidate. My God, would you make a great center. And uh, replacing her, that would be a big deal. Folks in Wisconsin... Do yourselves a favor. You can really fix this, what's going on there all over the country. You can participate in this and directly help them. Eric Hovde, H-O-V-D-E dot com. Good luck, my friend. God bless you and be well. Thank you so much, Mark. And I hope everyone has a blessed evening. Take care. You too. Sounds like a wonderful gentleman, doesn't he, Mr. Producer? I mean, there you go. There is a, a pearl of a candidate.